What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Today we're doing a seven-round mock draft for the Green Bay Packers. This was the recommended team from the guys, the Patreons, in my Discord chat. So again, if you want to have a say in a seven-round mock video here leading up into the draft, go check out my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash thatfranchiseguy. So let's get into it here. Green Bay Packers, they got a ton of picks in this draft, and for the first time, in a while, picking in the top half of the draft. This is a team that's had a lot of success. Obviously, Aaron goes down, and we saw what this team was without Aaron Rodgers. So they need to build that team up for sure. Definitely not the best roster, but they've made some good free agent moves. Put themselves in a position to compete this season. So let's see if we can get them a good draft that is going to get them into the Super Bowl running here. So first overall pick, first round pick here for the Packers. Some trade up potential here for a defensive back, which is probably this team's most glaring need, but I do like some of the signings this offseason, especially Tremont Williams. They get Kevin King back, who showed some good flashes as a rookie, so I think they at least have some good starters there. They definitely need some more youth, some more depth, and I actually think that Denzel Ward will be gone. I think Mika Fitzpatrick and potentially Derwin James are going to be gone here at 14. Any of those three would be my pick here. It's a little too early for Josh Jackson for me, who I love, but really still picking pretty early here. You want to go towards elite defensive talent if you're this team. And for me, that's Harold Landry. A lot of people say Marcus Davenport as the high upside elite athlete. No, for me, that's Harold Landry, especially in a 3-4 scheme, which the Packers are still running under defensive coordinator Mike Pettin. I see the Davenport mock all the time. That makes no sense to me because he is a raw 4-3 end to me. Why would a team that is trying to squeeze as much out of a window take a raw prospect when they can take possibly the most polished edge rusher in this class outside of Bradley Chubb? Now Landry, he's going to rotate now with Matthews and Nick Perry, but Matthews is on the back end of his career here can still get some stuff done, but you know, not a, a every down true pass rusher anymore, at least not an elite one. So you get a third guy in the rotation. Most of the best pass rushes in the league now anyway have three guys. And I get that corner is still an issue here and something you want to consider, but you get that edge rush going at an elite level, which really those three together, you could be having a really good edge rush here paired with a beefed up defensive line and it makes that job of the secondary much, much easier. So you're kind of in turn addressing corner by making that pass rush better. Also makes it easier for any corners you take later to have success as young players don't have to cover as long. So we're through the first round now into the second round. Again, picking pretty early here in the second round. Now, again, corner could be a need here. There definitely could be a really good prospect here. You know, I think of like, Mike Hughes or Jerry Alexander, there's a chance one of those guys falls. I think they ultimately go late first, really early second, but there's a chance those would be my picks here. But a player that I've been mocking to Green Bay throughout this entire draft process, I think it's a match made in heaven. Equinemius St. Brown, wide receiver out of Notre Dame. Now he's very, very raw and in a lot of team fits, I don't think he's going to be very good. I think he's going to end up being Devin Funches in a lot of situations. But we've seen this with this Packers team taking second, third round receivers and making them into superstars. Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams now, who was really struggling for the first few years, but they stuck with him no matter what. The athleticism and paired with Aaron Rodgers and his ability to coach up Devontae Adams eventually just won out. And now he's one of the better receivers in the league. Highest, one of the highest paid ones, at least. Got a big year coming up. That's a different debate, but it's definitely worked out with second and third round picks for this team. You take possibly the highest upside receiver in this entire class in the second round. There really is no reason with the right coaching and work ethic that Economy of St. Brown, just a true junior coming out, couldn't turn into A.J. Green paired with Aaron Rodgers. So I think that's a great pairing for sure. And then we're actually going to trade up here just a few spots. We're moving up eight picks in the third round. We're going to have to give up our first fifth round pick to do that, pick 150, which is still... A potential starter there in the fifth round but I see a player falling into the early third and not much further hence the trade-up I don't see this guy falling eight more picks Isaac Yadam cornerback out of Boston College really great measurables 
I don't think there's a huge gap, honestly, between Yadam and like a Jerry Alexander, Mike Hughes. He's going to come in. He'll be the third corner here, probably ahead of Devon House. And if and when, if history with this team has anything to say that a corner goes down, Yudum can step in and play outside. He's quick enough to play inside, but he is an outside corner. Really like this pick. I mean, serious first round upside, and he might go in the second. There's a very real chance. This might be a little optimistic for the Packers here, but I think there's a solid chance he falls into the early third round here trading up with Houston, who had a top four pick in the third round here. So we've really hit on some big needs and landed some really high upside players that I think are going to make an impact right away. Now we fast forward here to the fourth round. One of my favorite players in this class, Jamar Summers, cornerback out of UConn. He's got it as a corner, that fiery Josh Norman, Malcolm Butler type of competitiveness. Been thrown out of games for what, shoving refs, throwing balls at opposing players, all that stuff. He's got that kind of fire. So you do have some questions, but I think it's more just competitiveness, not really stupidity on his end. He's got some good tape and had a really good pro day. Now, reason I really like this pick here is he could come in and be this team's starting nickel right away because he plays so physical, could really make an impact in the run game. So we've really rounded out this defensive back depth chart here in the third and fourth rounds which is a great asset for the Packers. And then with pick 133 here in the fourth round, another one of my guys here, Corey Robertson, wide receiver out of Southern Miss, just a freak athlete. The guy's big, fast, strong, great after the catch, but he'll go up and get it as well. You know, his tape reminds me of like a Des Bryant. Obviously pretty raw, has a ways to go, but again, you pair him with Aaron Rodgers, Anything can happen. The sky is the limit there. And this receiver depth chart is really miserable right now. I still think they are in the market to sign Des Bryant. We'll see if that plays out in the next few days. The Giants don't seem to have any interest there. I think the Packers are still the no-brainer fit there for Des if he wants to come around on saying there's too much history there. Anyway, it's a draft video. Packers really need to hit on this receiver depth chart. It's Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, and then Geronimo Allison, who's got off field issues and isn't even that good of a player. Trevor Davis, who's a kick return specialist and nobody else. That is probably the biggest need in my opinion for this team. Luckily, they have Aaron Rodgers. They can develop whoever they get there. So then moving on to the fifth round here, we gave up 150. So we're getting into sort of dart throwing territory end of the fifth round here. This is where you start to get towards guys that are bubble players to even make the roster. We're seeing more and more lately that these late round picks aren't guaranteed a roster spot by any means. So at 172, you know, I think this team has some linebacker problems. Uh, it's well documented that I'm not very high on Blake Martinez. I think he's very good in run defense, but tackle numbers inflating what he really does for the team. I could care less about tackles. What I want in a linebacker is a guy who can cover. So I look at Sky Moore, linebacker out of South Carolina. Now his uh, his workout grades were not very good, but he's like 6'2", 225, and his tape, he plays much faster on tape. And this team, they got bigger guys. They've got Jake Ryan. They've got Blake Martinez. They need a smaller guy who can cover and run with slot receivers and tight ends, something they've really struggled with and a big reason this pass defense has been so miserable lately. So honestly, kind of a home run pick here, in my opinion, Sky Moore. Smaller linebacker, not even a starter, but a guy that'll come on the field on nickel packages, third downs. Think of a better version of what they had in Joe Thomas at linebacker over the last four years, who never really worked out. And then 174, just a couple picks later, Hometown guy, Natrell Jamerson. Not entirely sure what the market's going to be here for Jamerson. He was like a sixth or seventh round pick before the combine comes out, blazes like a 4-4. So he could actually go third or fourth round, but I think there's a good chance he's going to be here. But it's definitely a position of need, that third safety there. I like the combo that they have with Josh Jones and HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, but this team traditionally, I know it's a new scheme, but likes to use three safeties. I say this team, but most teams will use about three safeties in some sort of rotation with their sub packages. And then sixth to seventh round here again, just total kind of dart throws. But I look at, you know, this late in the draft, you're either looking at guys that are contributing on special teams, fill a very specific role for your offense or just projects. And that's going to be the trend here with these last few picks. So uh, the project pick here at 186 time in Paris, 
uh, athletic offensive tackle out of Stony Brook. Going to be a project, may or may not even make the team, but this team's done a pretty good job developing that tackle position. You get an athletic guy in there. And then 207, Tyler Conklin. This team has a hole on the depth chart as their third tight end, Richard Rogers, leaves. Conklin, a guy who can block, he can catch, but he's smaller. He's not a great athlete, but I think of him as a lock for a tight end three in this league. So it could be, in a way, a home run pick there. Just kind of know what you're getting kind of pick. 232, I like this pick for the Packers. Ike Botker, offensive tackle out of Iowa, missed, I believe, all of 2017 but had a really good 2016 at tackle for Iowa. Good run blocker, really fits that Iowa mold. And I know this Packer team loves Iowa players, just kind of that culture fit there. You know, if you're going to Iowa to play football, you don't necessarily care about playing in a big city. And then the last pick here, 239. This team's special teams have been marginal over the last few years. So I'm taking Quadri Henderson, wide receiver, kick returner out of Pittsburgh, Comes in, he's your kick returner right away, and then maybe this team gets creative and finds ways to use him on offense. I don't think that they'll have much interest in doing that. Usually when you have a great quarterback, you don't need to get cute with your Tavon Austin, Corderell Patterson type guys. So I really like this draft for the Packers. Really well-rounded, a lot of upside, but as well just coming in a lot of starters players that are going to fill specific roles like Sky Moore as a third down linebacker, Conklin as that tight end three. You've got a bit of an older offensive line. You're bringing in some youth here to develop, really addressing the depth at receiver and corner. And then you really get that home run edge rusher and Harold Landry, a player I'm very high on. So curious what you guys think of this draft as Packer fans or non-Packer fans. Either way, like the video if you enjoyed. Cheers, everyone. Drafts in three days. Can't wait. We'll see you next time.